I mean, it's you know, it's a dead planet. What can I say? But it's it's a, it's a really spectacular place to see uh, up close. Um, one of the things that uh, we had to contend with going out there was how to survive, how to live. We don't really think about it. I, you know, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I feel for the guys that have to live in the ISS for six months or nine months or whatever. Uh, this, the, what we call zero G, zero G, we call it zero gravity. And of course, we all understand that there's no such thing as zero gravity. Uh, we were in free fall the whole time of flight, and we're always under the influence of a gravitational field. So it's all free fall. Um, but you have to learn to do certain things, and, and, and in this free fall, you're, you are free falling at exactly the same time, the same direction, the same speed as the spacecraft that you're in. You're all going the same distance, same direction, same time. So you have to look inside that spacecraft now, of course, you can float around and, you know, you don't feel, there's no gravity uh, sensation. So you have to learn how to do things. Well, first thing I had to learn how to do was sleep. We had, uh, uh, we didn't have any of the amenities that the shuttle has. I mean, this is a very crude operation. We were in a spacecraft that was about the internal volume of a Volkswagen Beetle. And you try that sometime. Get a couple of friends and get in a Volkswagen Beetle and stay for two weeks and see what you like. Uh, but, um, we had, so we had to learn how to live in this small environment. 220 cubic feet of volume, if you want to know the exact number. We had sleeping bags. And that was kind of interesting because these sleeping bags weighed, oh, I don't know, four ounces or something, very, very lightweight. You could unroll these things, and it had a couple of, like, uh, 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 shoestrings almost on each end that were supposed to tie around something in the spacecraft to level it out. Well, I took a paper clip and tied it to the shoestring at the end, and I just hooked the paper clip over a bolt head on either end. Just, just an ordinary old paper clip. And you slide into the sleeping bag. It's not really a sleeping bag. It's, it's, it's very open. It's a mesh kind of thing. The problem that they had was that they only made this thing come up to the neck. So you're laying there like this, and your head's out of the sleeping bag. And you try to go to sleep. Uh, it was really hard the first night. If any of you... Let me, let me ask you a question. How many of you, just as you're going to sleep, have had the feeling of falling off a cliff? <laughs> Anybody had that feeling? Where you're falling? Well, see, that's what we were doing. So that wasn't, there's nothing artificial about that. We were actually falling. <laughs> what would happen is I'd start to go to sleep and my head would start to wander on me because you can't control it. You know, we're so used to one gravity. It's unbelievable. You go to bed at night, you slide into bed, you put your head on a pillow, it's gravity that keeps it there, right? You don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to do a thing. You just relax against the pillow, and gravity keeps it there. You get up there, and you don't have that gravity, and all of a sudden, your head's get a mind of its own, and it starts wandering all over. And boy, I'll tell you, nothing will wake you up faster than your head moving around up there. <laughs> I finally hit, <clears throat> found a solution where I put my head in the corner of the sleeping bag. I unzipped it, and instead of it coming up to my neck, I pulled it up over my head. And I had to scrunch up a little bit, you know, to get down in it. Um, and, and that stabilized my head, and that allowed me to go sleep that night. The next night, it was easier, and by the third night, no sleeping bags, no tie-downs, no nothing. It just, when, when it's time to go to bed, you just close your eyes go to sleep. Where are you? It's easy. Uh, you have to be a little careful. We, we did take the safety precaution of using a seatbelt to hold us in a couch, because you don't want to float into the instrument panel and maybe hit a switch that, might put you off in a, going in a different direction. So we, we, we did use seatbelts for that, for that kind of thing. Eating, I, I won't go into the whole procedure, but we had, uh, we had uh, very, very crude food compared to what they eat in space today. Uh, you know, today they take a TV dinner and they put it in the microwave and they heat it up, and, you know, just like being at home. We had it all freeze dried, and you had to put water in it and knead it and big mess. Um, but anyway, it was okay. The, the food turned out to be okay, and we ate that. And then, of course, if you eat and drink, well, let me talk about drink first. I'm a coffee drinker, right? I like my coffee. So I had freeze-dried coffee. I suspect this was the first time they freeze-dried coffee. 
so I had freeze dried coffee. I had, I had coffee black, I had coffee with sugar, and I had coffee with cream and sugar. Depending on my mood, then I could, you know, kind of, if, if I wanted dessert, I had coffee with cream and sugar. And I, you know, that was my after dinner. 